Hi everyone, Mr. Johnny here. Decided to upload another video. Actually, this video is kind of spontaneous, forced. I decided to make it because actually I got someone interested in it. So, oof, for my channel, it's like huge, huge achievement. Anyway, this video is about TDA 2022. There are two versions of this chip, we, one in 16 pin deep package, the other one is in 8 pin deep package. Uh, one of them has an M at the end, 2022 M, but I can't remember which one. I guess the one with 16 pins, but can't be sure. Anyway, the, the schematic that I used came from datasheet, so no walkers there, plain standard schematic, two amplifiers bridged together because I'm going planning to use a single speaker here so why not to get myself a bit more output power and give the second uh, amplifier a job as well. So actually I'm planning to use a single lithium ion cell for the power supply so the voltage that the thing is will be powered off will be around like 3 to 4.2 volts around that not more than 4.2 volts the battery ain't gonna hold it and gonna be held at that voltage it's just a charging termination voltage but anyway and I actually did what I'm not supposed to do. Maybe you spotted it already, maybe you did not. So what do you think I did not, I shouldn't do? Running in bridge mode. Well, I shouldn't use forum loads running in bridge. <laughs> That's not very a great idea, but again. I I used the forum speaker just because I'm using low supply voltage so I took that as advantage because uh, let's do the ohms law when you apply like 4 volts let's say straight 4 volts into forum speaker it will get like 1 amp passing through it and the chip itself has an output uh, peak current of 1 amp and I know for sure that there will be losses across the output transistors in the chip. So there will be loss of one output transistor there, one output transistor there. So I'm very likely gonna lose like about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts like that. So there will be like 3.7 volts divided by 4 ohms. And I'm actually very, very... I don't think very much that this chip will output too much power. So enough babble. And here's the board. Ridiculous little thing. Using a knockoff. It's not an original chip as you can see. Because it says SP2822 rather than TDA2822. And uh, yeah. The board on the, out, on the other side looks like this. I couldn't be bothered making a star ground, so I just filled the, the free space with a ground plane. Works reasonably well. The hiss that I'm getting actually is, a, I guess, I will be getting that hiss anyway. It's just in inherent nature of the scene. Even though if you make a star ground, there will be that noise, I'm pretty sure. It can be a little bit less in amplitude, but it will be there anyway. I actually try thought that it, that noise and oscillation going on. So I included these RC clamps, which I originally omitted from the design. Then I tacked them here. And they didn't help, so I can actually omit them. And it will be fine. So now let's give it a listen, shall we? Oh boy.
that's gonna be a little bit different difficult because copyright strikes plus the fact that it's uh, close to midnight and everybody is sleeping so I'm gonna be using my power supply here I'm gonna set it to about 4 volts that's fine connect it up that's a bit difficult with one hand alright One thing that I like here that it that is uh, you don't get the usual vamp that you get. It just you can see I flick the switch, load switch on the power supply, and it's quiet. And here is a hiss. I mean, like it's quiet, but it's there. Being the picky bastard I am, I, I want it to not exist, as I already mentioned. <laughs> but anyway, all right, let's go and play some music. <clears throat> okay. Oh God. Damn the windows. I'm gonna play a little bit of a time because go figure copyright strikes. I get you all the time. The noise, the distortion that you hear is in speaker uh, caused by speaker excursion being too much and causing some crap to vibrate inside. The speaker is contaminated inside with some garbage which rocks when the call moves and causes that noise but nonetheless all right next song If you ask me, actually, you can see that speaker excursion was actually very nice in this song as well, but I did not get that distortion. So it might be actually distortion in the track, but that doesn't make much of a sense since that track was a Jen Hammer Crockett theme, and guess what? It's in free lossless audio codec. So Having a distortion there actually doesn't make any sense, or does it? Anyway, let's get another song here for you to take the nice sniff of this amplifier. And yes, as I mentioned, it's not terribly much of a hiss here, but it's it's there, if you put your ear close, you can definitely hear it, but kind of annoying. My another amplifier, discrete one, doesn't help him hiss like at all. Barely hisses, very small amount. I'm gonna demonstrate it at the end of this video, actually. Okay, let's give one more song and I will show you the, my discrete one. Oh boy. Here is this cheap ass 
portable speaker is a piece of plastic pipe stuck in it oh but despite the look it's actually a very nice performer let's give that a listen all right oh, same song It has much less of a voltage gain, so I need to crank it up rather high, but... Oh, I forgot to... Fast forward it. That's fine. Let's stop the song. And you can see volume all the way up. And silence. A little bit of hiss, which actually, if I go and unplug this, rest it there, that hiss actually goes away. So that his was purely a fault of a laptop. Again, you can hear. The speaker is still active, as you can see. All right, so that's that. Thanks for watching this boring video. See ya.